エスカノール様だ。<笑><笑>
the material now drawn out to length, Ilya uses a hot cut tool to cut them into two equal parts. So you've seen us draw out bars using the hit turn technique pretty often on the show, but you've never seen us do two bars at once. This really demonstrates a lot of skill, and to be honest, Ilya is kind of showing off. So now that I've trued up the edge and gotten the alignment exactly where I need it to be, I've moved on to the surface grinding or the edge grinding of our axe. One of the major challenges with grinding or polishing a giant forging like this is it has a really rough surface. I have to make that surface look really nice and smooth. I've gone ahead and done one side. Now let's go ahead and finish out the second. Then we'll get it heat treated and then the real challenge starts which is polishing it after the heat treat. create the cylindrical-like middle portions of our spear points, Billy is using a swage underneath the power hammer that has the proper form to it. He's just going to take his time, be very careful, and run it up the center of the material. After that, he can move on to drawing out the blades. We have our top and our back spikes back from forging. I must say, Ilya did a divine job forging them. Now, there are several different ways we could have done this. Could have just added some round stock on a plasma cut blade. But to be honest, forging them not only makes them much stronger, but you know, shows off some higher level of skill as well. It's now my job to go in and just clean up the perimeters and then move on to sanding the blades themselves being sure that I leave enough thickness to the blades that they heat treat nice and safely. Since there's a lot of central mass on the center of these blades, it could cause a lot of warping if I grind them too thin. Because these blades have very different thicknesses, very thick in the center and very thin on the edges, Ilya is going to be coating them with a slurry during the heat treat to play it safe. With the back and top spike now heat treated and tempered, I can move on to the final polishing to finish out our blades. All right, now we're getting ready to cut the angel wing parts for our seven deadly sins axe. We're going to cut it using our CNC plasma table out of some 316 plate steel.
Often we work fairly thin materials when we create forms like this. But since this is a structural part of this weapon, Ilya is going to have to use thicker material. That'll have to be worked hot, or it would be very difficult to get the forms he needs. On the guard for this handle, there's actually a large flange on the top and bottom of it. They could be made as one piece and then the guard set in. I'm going to do two separate pieces because Ilya wants a hole in the guard where the handle goes through, so I'll have a top and bottom flange. But I'll turn them together so that I know that they're roughly the right shape and they pretty much match. I'm starting with a piece of three inch solid stock. It's about eight inches long, so it's very heavy. I'm going to be cutting the outside and then putting a big hole through the inside. I'm going to cut them in half, and then I'll do a little bit of internal cut that's going to take some of the weight out, and we'll put the whole piece together. Ilya now takes his material and brings it up to heat, takes it to the nasal, draws out a spike, cuts it off, draws out the next spike, cuts that off. He's able to make all four spikes from the same piece of material, and they'll be fastened to the guard. So Ilya has forged four spikes, and where these spikes are going to attach is to our D-shaped handguard. So where your hand holds the axe, there's going to be a D-shaped guard that goes like that, and then these spikes are going to be attached all the way on the outside. So what I'm going to do now is just move to a sander, clean them up, and then we'll be able to move on and actually weld them on to our guard. All right, we have the body parts formed for our angel, both the tail and the wing section. I'm gonna be grinding in a lot of detail on the narrow wheel, but to get things started, I gotta get all my surfaces nice and clean. So I'm gonna start on an 80 grit, move progressively through the grits, and then we'll move on to doing the detail work after. the body for the central part of our angel, now cleaned off all the way through 220. Time to move to a narrow wheel to start adding in some detail. This is meant to mimic the robe of an angel and the folds in the gown. I'm gonna start with a narrow wheel, strike my lines, and then I'll go back to giving that more depth on the edge of a sanding wheel. Using a C-shaped forge, Ilya is going to very carefully rotate the axe blade back and forth until he gets an even heat across the entire length of our axe. Now that he has achieved that goal, 
it's time to quench in water. All right, it's time to dish our central circles for our ax. This will be the mounting point for all of our different blades. It's where all the structure comes from. Now, a lot of times I see when people make props with circles like this, they leave them flat. But if you add a little bit of doming, it actually is much more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So we're gonna use the screw press that utilizes the oldest form of mechanical advantage, the inclined plane, in the form of a screw. With just simple rotations of the handle like this, we're putting down massive amount of tonnage using a top die and a bottom die to create our form. So when you're trying to get a nice even dish on basically a bowl shape like this, it's best to start around the outside, work all the way around and then kind of just spiral your way into the center, creating a nice even shape. Afterwards, you can fill your flat spots and just go over different places until you get it nice and smooth. So what we have here is our knuckle bow or handguard portion of our axe. What I started with was drawing a three inch circle here. That'll match the two lathe turnings that'll sandwich on either side that Carrie did. And then one and a quarter inch holes that will slide over our pipe. What we have to do now is put our D shape into it. In the anime, it looks pretty flat, but once again, if you put a little bit of curvature, a little bit of dishing in a flat piece, it looks much more pleasing to the eye. So we're gonna go back to the screw press, start by giving a really light dish, and then do any hand forming that we have to do afterwards. With our spikes cleaned up and the knuckle bow formed, it's time to weld on our spikes to the knuckle bow. I hold them in place as John Tack welds them from the inside. Once we have all four spikes in place, John can do a final structural weld. All right guys, so at this point, we now have our spikes welded to our handguard. I went and blended all of the weld from the inside of the ax here. Now I know some of you might have your finger on the troll button right now, thinking, hey, they made every part out of steel up until this point, and obviously, most of the parts on this have to be brass. The way we're gonna go about this is we're gonna use a wire wheel with brass wire on it, heat up our parts and brass everything to the right color. The reason we chose to do that instead of making out of brass is that this ax is massive. Brass is pretty soft and brittle sometimes. So we really needed to make sure the structure of the ax was nice and solid, so we went with steel. With all of our pieces of the angel now joined as one, we have to start creating the offset pieces that go on the sides. I've cut a series of triangles out and Ilya is just gonna bend them and form them to shape and then weld them in.
Now that the main body of the angel form has been welded up, Matt will begin to blend the welds off. We'll have to clean the entire piece and then attach the head section. and a solid brass wire wheel. Rick and Tanner are gonna go through, heat up the parts, and then brass them. They've got pieces of steel clamped to the outside of the blade. That's gonna prevent the blade itself from being annealed along the cutting edge. We knew that we had to respond to the incredible number of requests we've seen. Every person in the shop had some task to perform here. But now that we've finished, we're ready to move on and create the next weapon here on Man at Arms. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.